Well, welcome now to the second part of my Kokaliki episodes. And this time I'm going to look at what you can do with the soup or the stock or the chicken or leeks after you've made the soup and you've been through all of the possibilities of just chicken and leeks and stock. So here we are with stock reheating and I'm about to use the skillet to put the chicken and leek in and let's get into it. Okay, so here we have some olive oil gently heating and a, uh, a leek, just an extra leek. I've got lots and lots of extra leeks because um, one chicken I can maybe go through the leeks the size they are in uh, Cambodia. I can go through about six or seven leeks in the course of a week. So. I'm just uh, sautéing it gently and I'm going to now add a little bit of chicken. Okay now in with some chicken. Don't really need to sauté it or anything because this is all the cooked chicken from the original soup. I'm just, uh, just heating it through. Now I'm going to add the stock. I'm actually going to do it all in one go. <clears throat> and now there are choices to be made and that's what we're going to talk about next because the chicken and leek is a very delicate flavor and you don't want to mask it or drown it but you can do various things and so let's consider what we might do at this point i'm going to make some rice and so this is going to be served over rice and it's enough for two portions, so maybe I'll do two things with it. Let me give that some thought. All right, so now I'm just going to put on the stove low, and I'm going to add to the chicken and leek mixture a little bit of Cambodian green curry, proprietary mix. I could do it myself, but I'm being a bit lazy this morning. I'm just going to heat this through, and on the other burner, I've got some rice cooking. I just want to get this moving about. I'm probably going to have to thicken it up a little bit, although I may simply reduce and thicken that way. We'll have to see. Uh, it's looking good. This is lunch today. I'm really hungry, so I'm going to try and do it quickly. It's going to be a matter of how long it takes for the rice to boil. So I'll let that do its thing, and I'll be back. And here's the finished 
dish, I did in fact just uh, reduce the sauce without adding any additional thickening, although the um, green uh, curry may have added a bit of thickening, but I could have done the same thing without adding any uh, additional spices. I could have just um, reduced the soup on the stove until it was thick enough to make a sauce and then it would be chicken and leek stew and could serve it over rice. So the point of the dishes to come are that they are basically cockaliki soup, chicken and leek soup, turned into something different without adding too much, without changing the taste a whole lot. And another way you can change the soup is to add potatoes. They aren't going to change the uh, taste all that much but they will change it a little bit and they will add a little bit of uh, carbohydrate so a little bit more body to the soup and so it becomes chicken, leek and potato soup and leek and potato soup is a very old classic in England and I like it very much indeed I often add potatoes to my cockaliki soup when I want to add a little more body so we can look at all of that right now. Here's the soup with some potatoes merrily boiling away. You'll see that I have peeled the potatoes. I might not have to, but I did just for aesthetics here. And they are chopped up into cubes and they are boiling away in the soup. And we will continue to do this until the potatoes are thoroughly cooked and then serve. Now here's one more trick. I've got out my immersion blender. I bought it in Italy five years ago for a Christmas present for myself and I've carried it all around the world because it's so convenient. So much better than having a stand blender or a food processor when you want to make a blended soup. So I've got potatoes and leeks and the cockaliki broth. I don't have any chicken in the saucepan, but I'm just going to blend it until it becomes a complete puree. And then this is the result. And you can heat it up and eat it warm, or you can chill it and eat it cold and when you eat it cold it's very much like vichyssoise and what I do with it when it's either hot or cold sometimes is I add either cream or yogurt in this case I'm using yogurt it gives it a slightly sour taste and also gives it a little creamier texture and taste Here's another possibility. Take your uh, basic cockaliki soup and add some dumplings. In this case, I've got Chinese dumplings. I could make them myself, but I'm a bit lazy about these things. I bought these frozen in the supermarket, and they've got leeks in the dumplings. They, they are actually pork and leek dumplings, but the pork flavor is pretty mild when added to the soup. They are delicious and make a very filling lunch. And I had them, in fact, today for lunch. So I thought uh, two videos was going to be enough for Kokaliki, but oh no. In the middle of the week, I decided to get out an old carcass and bones that had actually been frozen and sitting for a while. And I thought, well, I'll make some more. So I drained off the soup that I'd already made and then put the carcass back in the pot with some extra leeks and made another pot of broth, which actually maybe wasn't such a quite a good idea because it means I've been doing things with chickens and leeks for about two weeks now and I'm beginning to look like a chicken and leek. 
But anyway, uh, there was more to come. I did a lot more, including making consommes. I made a, a single consomme and a double consomme, which involved clarifying the broth and reducing it and then adding things. And so that will be my subject for next time. Meanwhile, hit the like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.